This is my student support system. Keep watching, keep learning. The small intestine is continuous with the stomach at pyloric sphincter. The small intestine is approximately 5 meters long and leads to large intestine at ileocecal valve. It lies in the abdominal cavity and surrounded by large intestine. Here you can see this is the small intestine and this is large intestine which surrounds the small intestine. Small intestine is composed of three different parts duodenum, jejunum and ileum. The duodenum is about 25 centimeter long and it curves around the head of pancreas. Secretions from gallbladder and pancreas merge in a common structure that is hepatopancreatic ampulla and enter into the duodenum at duodenal papilla. The duodenal papilla is guarded by a ring of smooth muscles known as hepatopancreatic sphincter or sphincter of odi. Here you can understand that this is the pyloric sphincter, this is part of stomach and here duodenum starts. It is curved, okay, only 25 centimeter up to here and it curves the around the head of pancreas. This is pancreas gland and this is the duct of uh, coming from gallbladder and this is coming from pancreas and commonly they enter into the duodenum and this is guarded by sphincter of odi. The jejunum is the middle part or middle section of small intestine and is about 2 meters long and the ileum is the terminal section which is about 3 meters long and ends at the ileocecal valve which controls the flow of material from the ileum to cecum. Cecum is the first part of large intestine and this ileocecal valve prevents back flow or regurgitation of the contents which have reached to the large intestine. Here you can understand this. This is duodenum, this is jejunum and this is ileum. It ends at the uh, starting point of large intestine. Structure of small intestine. The wall of small intestine is composed of the same four layers that make up most of GI tract. The mucosa, submucosa, muscularis and serosa with some modifications in outermost layer and the innermost layer. The outermost layer is double layered peritoneum, also called as mesentery, attaches the jejunum and ileum to the posterior abdominal wall. The large blood vessels and nerves lies on the posterior abdominal wall, while the branches of blood vessels to the small intestine lies between the two layers of this mesentery or peritoneum. The surface area of small intestine means the mucosa is greatly increased by permanent circular folds, villi and microvilli. Okay, so these three structures are there which increase the surface area of small intestine. So here you can uh, see these are the circular folds and these are permanent unlike the stomach which are smoothed out when the stomach is full they are not smoothed out they remains as such they promote mixing of chyme with the enteric juices as it passes along when the chyme moves from in the uh, small intestine these folds allow mixing of the chyme with intestinal uh, juices.
structure of small intestine is continue the villi which are finger like projections in the mucosal layer into the intestinal lumen and is about 0.5 to 1 mm long their wall consists of columnar epithelium known as enterocytes and these enterocytes have microvilli on their upper end which are 1 micrometer long the goblet cells that secrete mucus are intercepted between enterocytes these epithelial cell encloses a network of blood and lymph capillaries the lymph capillaries are called lacteals because the absorbed fat gives the lymph a milky appearance the absorption of some final stage digestion of nutrients take place in the enterocytes before entering to the blood and lymph vessels here you can see these are the villi and on this free border of this enterocyte the, there are microvilli okay these are the lacteals or lymph vessel and this is blood capillary network the intestinal glands are simply tubular glands situated below the surface between villi okay so here in between there are some tubular glands and they pass upwards okay so they start from here secrete juices and then they move upwards and finally when they reach at the tip they are shed off okay because of wear and tear and another new cells they come from below the wall of villi is replaced the entire epithelium is replaced in small intestine every 3 to 5 days there are four types of cells present in mucosa of small intestine the absorptive cells produce digestive enzymes and absorb digested foods these are also known as enterocytes and they are abundant a lot of enterocytes are there then goblet cells they are present in between which secrete mucus enteroendocrine these cells produce regulatory hormones such as secretin and cholecystokinin these hormones are secreted to initiate release of pancreatic juices and bile pen cell produce lysozyme which protect the small intestine from pathogens that have survived the acid condition of the stomach and there are pear patches or lymphatic tissue in the small intestine they also protect the small intestine from bacterial attack functions of small intestine first function is onward movement of contents by peristalsis movement in small intestine continuous peristalsis movements are seen which is increased by parasympathetic nervous system stimulation secretion of intestinal juices also increased by parasympathetic stimulation completion of chemical digestion of carbohydrates protein fat in the enterocytes of the villi protection against infection by microbes that have survived an antimicrobial action of hydrochloric acid in the stomach by solitary lymph follicles and aggregated lymph follicles in the small intestine secretions of hormones cholecystokinin and secretin and absorption of nutrients these are the functions my student support system keep watching keep learning